Hello everyone and welcome to Zorok Media. In this video we'll be discussing Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, a sequel to Pokemon Colosseum. This is an atypical Pokemon RPG. Instead of collecting gym badges and unlocking new routes to towns and such, you're working against a group called Cypher as they attempt to use shadow Pokemon to conduct their nefarious deeds. Using a snag machine, your goal is to steal back the corrupted shadow Pokemon, purify them, and bring down their organization. It's not critical to know much about the first game in this duology, Pokemon Colosseum, but I'd like to give a brief overview. The player character was a member of Team Snagum, but decided to defect, taking the snag machine with him. Team Snagum's goal, much like Cypher, is to steal other people's Pokemon and boost their own strength to seize power over the region. He then goes to defeat Cypher, but somehow they stick around. I've been an avid Pokemon fan for almost my entire life, playing each of the mainline games multiple times, making dozens of different and diverse teams of Pokemon. So it took me an oddly long time to finally get around to this one, especially since I played the previous game shortly after it came out back in the 2000s. Be sure to stay until the end to hear what my daughter thinks of the game. We start the game as a boy named Michael, participating in Pokemon purification research. This group of scientists suspect that Shadow Pokemon may be used again, and want access to a better method of purifying them. Unexpectedly, Cypher shows up at their door. There's a lot of dialogue in the game, at times, too much. It's a nice little story with decent characters. Michael's father gave him an Eevee before he died, and it's effectively our starter Pokemon. Shortly into the game, we gain access to all five of its evolutions available at the time. This is unique and a fun option to have. Eevee and its evolutions are typically reserved for later in the games, if you get one at all. So I was talking about a snag machine and stealing shadow Pokemon, but how does this work? Normally, once a Pokemon has been caught, or otherwise acquired by a trainer, it can't be easily taken. However, using the Snag Machine, its user can make regular Pokeballs able to steal other trainers' Pokemon freely. Shadow Pokemon are regular Pokemon that have had their hearts closed by artificial means, causing them to become more powerful and aggressive. We go around catching these Pokemon, and there's a nice variety of different ones, especially from the start. Building an interesting team of six is nice here. Combat is done almost exclusively as double battles, where each trainer sends out two Pokemon at a time until one of them has none remaining. It's turn-based, and both you and your opponent choose your Pokemon's moves at the same time. The turn is then executed based on each Pokemon's speed stat and some other factors. There's something of a rock, paper, scissors mechanic in nearly all of these Pokemon games. Type advantages and disadvantages. Say you have a water Pokemon, and I hit it with an electric move. It would deal double damage to you. But if I hit your Pokemon with a fire move, it would deal half damage. These are impressive looking battles for the time period. The other Pokemon RPGs at the time were primarily on the Game Boy systems, and had nice pixel art that looked great in their own regard, but this is all fully 3D with lots of effects and animations. Speaking of the nice animations, battles can become sluggish in the later parts of the game, and plentiful. There are tons of different attacks, statuses, weather effects, and more continually going off for each fight. The graphics can come across nicely as a whole, but a lot of characters are grossly exaggerated and strange looking. Fights are generally easy, but as the game progresses and even for boss fights, you'll be challenged unless you train your Pokemon outside of the plot. There are a few different methods for curing the shadow Pokemon you acquire. The primary way is to battle with them and lower their gauge until they're ready to be purified at an early location in the title. You can also put them in the purification chamber with other regular Pokemon, and massaging shadow Pokemon with special cologne also lowers the gauge. There were no wild Pokemon to be found in the first game, but there are a handful here, 
and the process isn't my favorite. I would have liked to see simple patches of grass to be walked through and Pokemon encountered. However, you need to wait for the creatures to come and eat these Pokemon snacks. You'll be notified of one eating and will have to stop what you're doing and investigate. Otherwise, it'll eat all the food and peace out. The soundtrack is another area where we get a big increase in quality from the Game Boy games, though I'm quite partial to those songs. There's a lot of impressive and quality music here, setting a nice vibe. Going into side activities, there are a few stadium tournaments you can participate in for rewards, including experience points to level up your creatures, simulation battles that are similar to puzzles with rental Pokemon, and battle bingo for some non-battling extras. Let's hear what my daughter has to say about the game. I like Jolteon and Cluster and Easy. I like the star, the Thunderstone that makes Easy into Jolteon. I do not like the Yucky Pokemon because it kind of looks like poop. I played this using Dolphin, the GameCube and Wii emulator. And as usual, it performed well with plenty of different graphical options. There is a widescreen patch available, which makes the rendered graphics properly 16x9, but stretches the user interface, which includes all dialogue, battle menus, and everything else. I didn't use it because it looked bad. I'm glad I finally got to completing this title, and I can recommend it for Pokemon fans. It's an unusual game for the series, but worth experiencing as it still has the excitement of encountering new creatures to add to your team, getting stronger, and exploring some interesting places. If you aren't a Pokemon fan, I'm not sure if this particular game will change your mind, and several other mainline Pokemon games would be superior picks. Please let me know what you think of the game, video, or anything else in the comments below. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you for watching.